Hello, I'm Nigel Pease and I'm here at Barnsley College looking at some music production techniques using Pro Tools software. In this particular video we're going to look at the I.O. setup. So to start with we go up to Setup, I.O. and that opens up the I.O. setup. Uh, within this we can configure paths for input, output, inserts and buses. For the purposes of this video we're going to concentrate on input though the principles of creating and uh, deleting paths are the same for any of the tabs. In its default state the I.O. setup shows you all the available inputs and outputs for whatever interface is connected to your system. So in this case we've got a 002 so the inputs that it's showing us are 8 analog, 8 optical and the SP diff there making 18 in total. For us to create some paths, uh, we need to just clear some space and remove some of the existing ones. So I'm going to select the SP diff one there and then holding down shift, select three and four. So we've selected all the ones in between and click delete path. So we just have uh, the mic inputs one and two remaining. To create a new path, we click, we click new path. And the first thing we have to do is choose the format of that path. There's a little question mark here. If I click on that, we get a drop down giving us the choices. If this was a, an HD system, we'd see many more choices, 5, 1, etc. But with uh, this system, we have mono or stereo. So I'm going to choose mono. There's still nothing on the grid, but we get the pencil tool here to determine which physical input is going to be represented by this mono path on the mix window. So I'm going to click on input number three and we get a little M there to show a mono path. If I double click on its name, we can just name this path demo, press enter, and there we are. So I now click OK, and we'll have a look how this looks on the mix window itself. If I go to the input section of any of the audio tracks and click on that, you can see the choices we have now are the mic line one and two that were there already, plus this new demo mono path that uh, we've just created. OK, back to the I.O. setup again. I'm going to just remove that mono path, delete path there, and create a new path, and this time make a stereo one. So format, stereo. If I click now on number three, you'll see it places an L and an R on three and four, so that, that, that pair are the left and right inputs of this path. Name it once again, we'll call it demo again. But before we go back to the mix window this time, I'm going to create some subpaths, which is this tab just here. So once and twice to create two subpaths. They're mono subpaths. And you can see that the boxes are available under the L and the R of the stereo path. So with the pencil tool, I'm going to click under the left one there for the first path. And there's placed an M there for a mono subpath. And under the R on the second one for another mono subpath. We'll name these by double clicking and I'll call these sub1 and sub2 and we'll say OK once more. So if we go back to the input section of the uh, mono track we can see now our input choices are still mic line 1 and 2 but now sub1 and sub2 which are the two mono subpaths I just created. If I create a stereo track so that's shift command N and stereo and we have a look at the input section of this stereo track you can see the options there are the mic line one and two and the demo main path that we created earlier. So if we go back into the I.O. setup again when I named the subpaths I named them after the uh, main path however if you were for example wanting to bring in the output of a CD player and you wanted the labeling of the main path to be related to the uh, labeling of the subpaths you could name the main path and the subpaths will pick up the name from the main path. So if I just demonstrate that, if I double click on that and we'll call this CD player, press enter, you'll see the subpaths have picked up the name CD player and added .l .r to signify left and right of that CD player. So if I say OK now, you can see if we were going to record onto a stereo track from the CD player, we could choose input CD player in that way. If we wanted to just record one of the outputs of the CD player, the left or the right, we could use a mono track, 
and choose the input CD player left or CD player right. Back to the I.O. setup one last time. If you open a session and you've uh, got an I.O. setup that is not the default, if someone's relabeled things, if it's a shared system or whatever, and you want to get back to the normal default situation, then you can click the default button just there. And what that does is give you, it renames the paths and gives you all the available paths for your interface on your particular system. So we're back to a default state there of the analog inputs, opticals, and SPDIF. So there we are, a basic introduction to the I.O. setup within Pro Tools.